Our News 4 reporting team spread out all across Davidson and Williamson counties tonight. Let's start in Cool Spring with Brittany Weiner. Brittany Marsha Blackburn will be trading one seat for another. Tom, she will, and this was a historic night tonight. Marsha Blackburn, now the first female U.S. Senator for Tennessee, something she got a very loud applause for here tonight by her supporters. And supporters that I spoke with in the crowd tonight said they never had a doubt that she was going to win. They never thought of this event tonight as anything other than a victory party. They told me they were confident she would win and would win by a larger margin than what was predicted. Many people calling this a very close race tonight. Blackburn told her supporters one person does not win a campaign, thanking all of her volunteers, her supporters, her staff, and her family. She also thanked President Trump and Vice President Pence for all of their support. She also talked about everything she wants to accomplish now, defending the Second Amendment, supporting veterans, and ensuring immigration laws are followed, saying she starts work tomorrow. stand with me tonight is no different. I ask that you stand with me as we work on these issues for our state, for our nation. We know that we're going to be going to work early tomorrow on these issues. The transition begins. I look forward to being your senator. God bless Tennessee. And Blackburn had some big name supporters here tonight. John Rich from Big and Rich, as well as country singer Gretchen Wilson, who performed, and also State Senator Jack Johnson, who I actually talked to after the victory party tonight. He said he is overjoyed to be part of this event tonight. He performed with his band here and said he is confident that Blackburn will do great things for the state of Tennessee. Tom and Tracy. All right, thanks so much, uh, Brittany Wander tonight. Let's bring in our political analyst, Kent Siler. You've been here all evening with us, Kent. What were the keys to Marsha Blackburn's victory? She nationalized the race. She made this a, a contest between the national Democratic brand and the national Republican brand. She knew that it was a base election, and uh, she succeeded. She stayed on message. She was very disciplined. Now, we talked before this newscast just a little <clears throat> while ago about the fact that um, She's it's kind of saddled Phil Bredesen with the National Democratic brand, and that was very effective. It was. I mean, if you looked at a lot of the polling, even the polling that had Phil Bredesen down, you know, eight points, he was still, he had a higher favorable than, than Marsha Blackburn did. But his, she knew his party, though, was toxic in many parts of Tennessee. She tied him to it. Remember the first debate, I think she said, she said uh, Chuck Schumer 13 right. times. The second debate, Hillary Clinton 13 times. Uh, so she knew what she was doing, and she was a disciplined candidate with a disciplined message. People are going to be picking this apart uh, for the next uh, yeah. several weeks, they are. Ken Siler, thanks so much. Tracy? Well, it is a very different feel in Nashville. We want to talk about Phil Bredesen, his voters having to watch him concede this evening. Carly Gordon at his viewing party this evening. His group was confident, though, till the end, Carly. Only were so many people thinking that this was going to be such a close race, and then in the end, it wasn't uh, at all. Phil Bredesen taking the stage just a short while ago with a concession speech, ultimately losing by a landslide. His uh, opening line, quote, I applied for the job, but I got a rejection letter. He then took time to congratulate his opponent, tonight's winner, Marshall Blackburn, and thank his volunteers. Then during his short speech, he gave a shout out to all of the young people who showed up to vote, saying, the young voters surprised him and encouraged him about the future of our country. I do have one word for you or some words for you, and that is please do not be discouraged. Your idealism is amazing. Keep on going. Keep on uh, working. As for what's next for Bredesen, at least politically, he made it sound on stage like this is it. He says he's had a great political run, and then he ended by saying he loves the state of Tennessee, his country, and he thanks everyone for all that they've done. Tom Tracy. Certainly some very gracious words tonight. Appreciate it, Carly. Senator Bob Corker tweeted out a brief statement congratulating Senator Marsha Blackburn, but also doubling down, saying he will be tirelessly working over the next few months until she takes over. All right, this turned out to be the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history, and we still don't know just how much money was spent 
but here's a look at the candidates' last reports. All right, here we go. As of October 17th, Phil Bredesen, as you can see right here, had spent the most money at $15 million. At the same time, his opponent, Marsha Blackburn, spent just about $12 million. That's a lot, but not the reason it's the most expensive. Ta-da, here it is. More than $53 million spent as of October 17th had been poured in from the state from outside sources. That's about double the amount each candidate spent individually. That just goes to show you just how important this election was on a national scale. And again, there are still two more weeks of spending unreported. That's right. Kent Siler joining us again. Let's keep talking money, sure. right? The most expensive Senate race we have ever seen. And as you saw, this was just as much of a national election then as a Tennessee election. It, it was. You know, the, the governor's race for a short amount of time was the most expensive race in Tennessee history. This one beat it out very quickly. Uh, I know everyone at home is tired of seeing ads. You know, this is the first race Tennessee has had since the Citizens United decision of the Supreme Court that allowed all of this outside money to come in. It's the first contested race. This has been what it's like to live in a swing state during a presidential year where you go to a break and you get four different ads. So we got a dose of what people in Virginia and Florida get in presidential years. And I think it's really important for folks to realize that it puts it all in perspective, it right? Does. This is the first time you felt this kind of heavy it, overload. It is here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Ken Siler, thank you.